Hi, welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Um, this series we're talking about how to migrate from Cisco to Brocade. So if you're, um, you know, used to working on Cisco or you're Cisco trained and you're um, configuring a Brocade device, you know, how are, how do they differ, right? So there's other uh, videos in this series about, you know, VLANs and link aggregation and OSPF and static routing and multiple other things. In this case, we're going to talk about VLAN, inter VLAN routing, or how do we route between VLANs on the device. So, um, pretty straightforward, really. So, on, on our Cisco, normally what we do, it's big T, um, you have an interface VLAN that belongs to the VLAN, right? So, interface VLAN 10, for example. So, if I didn't have the VLAN created previously, that would have just created the VLAN on the device. And then, um, under this under this interface VLAN, we can now add an IP address, right? So we can say an IP address, um, you know, 11.0.0.1 slash 20, oh, I can't do a slash, 255.255.255.0. Okay, and then we'll do another one. So interface VLAN 20 uh, IP address 12.0.0.1. 255, 255, 255, 0. Okay, so I now have, you know, IP addresses that belong to those VLANs, and so if any of those interfaces are up in the VLAN, it should now show up in the routing table as connected routes, and it should be able to route between them. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Uh, on the brocade side, um, and so, so you would take those VLANs, before I forget, you would take those VLANs then and assign the VLANs as access or tagged under the, under the individual interfaces, right, to, in order to, to assign those VLANs. So on the brocade side, config T, so we go into VLAN 10, right? So VLAN 10, we would add our interfaces into VLAN 10, so tagged or untagged, so, you know, untag E, one, one, I don't know, 20, for example. And then we create something called a router interface. So it's a router dash interface, VE, which stands for virtual ethernet, and then you can give it a number, right? So the number, uh, best practice says that number should always match the VLAN number, but it doesn't have to, right? So I could have called it VE 100 if I wanted to, when you go back and look at this configuration, you know, six months from now, you'll have to, you know, try to figure out what VE100 belongs to. So it's better just to, to um, and best practice to make them the same. But again, you don't have to do that. So router interface VE10 here, I now have an interface called VE10. And I'm going to do the same thing with VLAN20. So VLAN20, I'm going to do a router dash interface VE20. So I now have two new interfaces on my box, VE10, VE20. So now I can go to interface VE10 and configure it exactly the same way we did interface VLAN 10 and interface VLAN 20 on the Cisco side. So um, IP address, you know, 11.0.0.2 slash 24. Um, and then interface VE20, IP address, uh, 12.0.0.2 and so you'll notice that I used a CIDR mask in the previous example so Cisco doesn't accept CIDR mask but we do um, so you could do a slash 24 or you could type it out however you want to do that so that's it so assuming that any one of those ports is up in in VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 they're going to get put into the routing table as directly connected routes um, you know with an administrative distance of zero and it's going to route between them so you know, very, very similar concept. It's just, um, you know, you, you need to, to assign that router interface uh, on the brocade side um, as opposed to just putting the IP on the, on the interface VLAN on the Cisco side, but very, very similar. Uh, so, okay, so that's it for that. Thanks for joining and take care.